Hello, this is a uh, brief introduction to setup of the VRC radar client as used on the VATSIM virtual ATC network. Hopefully by now you've been able to download the client from the metacraft.com website, install it on your machine, and uh, you have an icon you can click on to uh, start it up if you haven't already. When you do start it up, you're usually presented with a small window, uh, and in there you'll have to select the default option to get going for the first time. Later on this window will have uh, your other settings in it, but for now open the client and you should have a screen something similar to what we're looking at here. Uh, once you start the client, if you're connected to the internet, it will go online and check for its servers. And if you look at the lower uh, portion of the screen, you'll see the results of that check. In this case, uh, and in most cases it is successful. The first thing VRC needs to get going is a uh, sector file. All, VR, all uh, ARTCCs have a download area or download library where you can access and uh, download the sector files that are pertinent to your uh, level of controlling. And uh, once you've done that, installed those on your machine, they'll end up in your VRC folder. And what we we'll want to do is we we'll want to get one of those uh, loaded here. So we go over to File, and we look down to Open Sector, click on that and it'll take you to your program files VRC installation you won't have all these options but hopefully you will have ZBW if you click on ZBW you'll find several uh, different subfolders of uh, sector areas in our case we're going to use Providence for this demonstration so we click on Providence and what we want to do is find the SCT2 file there click on that and it will load up into VRC and you can see that on the screen here you can use the mouse wheel or the F11 and 12 keys to zoom in and out. In this case, I'm using the mouse wheel. I want to just zoom in here. You can see that we're presented with some geography here in the, in the uh, form of coastline. There are some islands here, and the coastline continues up past Boston into Maine. But in the center of this area here, what we're, what we're looking at is Providence. You can use your right key, hold the right key down, on, and drag the screen to uh, center it or move it around. And uh, zooming in to the Providence area, you can see that we have PVD in, in the letters here, and the little square denotes that that's the Providence VOR. You also have some brown uh, uh, material here, but it doesn't really make much sense. So what we want to do is we want to look and see if we can find something, some way to load up the uh, runways and taxiways and the airport environment. Going up to the View drop-down menu uh, and running down through that, <clears throat> at the way at the bottom, you'll see something called Diagrams. Click on Diagrams. Another way to open this window is with the Control and G keys. I'm just dragging it out of the way here so you can see what's going on. You can see that it's divided into two sections, SIDS and STARS. And uh, what we're concerned with right now is the PVD airport geometry. And this other information will be useful to you as you control in other levels and areas, but for right now just click on PVD airport geometry and you'll see that on the screen you get a representation of the uh, airport environment for Providence. Zooming a little further, you can see that the runways are outlined in the heavier white uh, diagram, heavier white uh, font, and the taxiways are in the uh, smaller white or grayish uh, color. And the brown now takes the uh, form of buildings, which are associated with the airport proper. And uh, the last thing we want to do is we want to see if we can add some identities or some labels to this area. So going back to the view menu and running back on down again, uh, almost to the bottom, you'll see static text here. If you click on static text, you will now get uh, letters labeling the taxiways and the runways or numbers are showing, and there's uh, some other information available to you. You'll find this in almost any sector file you work at. And this will help you in uh, great measure when you're doing uh, ground and tower controlling at the airport. Now that we've got that much established, uh, what we want to do is get our, our VRC set up the way we want it. So going up to uh, settings again, uh, what we want to do here is we want to click on or look at the radar mode. Just hold your mouse over that and it will open up the uh, sub window. And in here, select either ground or tower radar. The reason for that is these other radar uh, options will not show you targets on the ground which are not squawking mode C. So if you're working as a delivery or ground controller, you want the either the ground or tower radar, which will enable you to see targets as they uh, appear on your as they show up at your airport and call you for clearance. Uh, again, 
uh, while we're in this menu, let's set up our uh, audio devices because to provide voice, we're going to need that. So in the settings menu, uh, roll on down to the audio devices option and select that. Now, Windows will uh, automatically populate this with what it feels is the, uh, the equipment that's connected to your machine available for your use. If you click in the down arrow in the microphone input device, uh, you should see some entries here, at least one if you do have a headset uh, connected to your machine. In my case, it's this Wave desktop micro microphone, and I'll collect that, click on that and select it. And the next window, I'll do the very same thing for the other part of the headset, which is the speaker part. So in this case, it's the uh, PLT DA60 that coincides with the one above. And in the last um, uh, window, I'll just select the speakers that are connected to my machine, and uh, that pretty much completes it for me. I'll leave the uh, head, headset output and speaker output volume at 100% for now and change them if I need to later. And these other two options are just enhancements that we don't need to be concerned with at this point. So I'll click on OK out of that window and that should go away. And you're, you're set up except for one more part. Uh, we want to have sounds active in VRC, so click on sounds under the setting menu. Here you'll find that uh, there are some options available. In this upper window, in the drop-down section, you'll see events listed, uh, events that are associated with certain messages or sounds. So if you click on, let's just use, for example, conflict alert. Uh, going down to the window below that, this is probably not populated on your, in your system. And what we'll do is we'll click on select, and that will take us back to the VRC area. If you see this no, no items match your search, click on the main VRC folder. And in there, you should see a submenu called Sounds. If you click on that, you'll see a whole list of uh, WAV files that are associated with certain events. And since we were looking at Conflict Alert, we'll find one here that says, in fact, Conflict Alert. Clicking on that, that will cause uh, that particular WAV file to be associated with this particular event. And just to make sure that it's what we want, we can click on Play. And you should hear an audible uh, sound, and that is your conflict alert. Go ahead and continue through this window and uh, make sure you select uh, a WAV file that, that is associated with every event listed in the window. When you're done, ensure that Sounds Active is checked and click on OK and leave that particular menu. Next, we go over to the View drop down. And the uh, first thing I want to do here is, uh, I'm sorry, go back to Settings and click on the General window the general selection. Here in uh, general under miscellaneous tab we want to fill in these two sections here. An alias file is important to your text controlling so there, since there's nothing in that window click on select. Once again it takes us back to the VRC folder. In the uh, VRC folder select Boston. Under Boston you should see something called ZBW alias VRC edition dot text. Click on that and it will populate that particular box. Below it is a POF file section, which is your position file. It tells VRC how to uh, recognize controllers around you. Click on the Select button, right back to the v ZBW subfolder, and under there is the uh, POF file. Click on that, and it will select the POF file into that window. And for the rest of this particular tab, we don't need to make any changes except for one. I recommend that you select Use System Pre Precision Cursor, which gets rid of that annoying question mark looking uh, cursor that is the default with VRC. Having uh, selected that, let's click out of this um, menu. And uh, you can see now that the cursor on your screen is a crosshatch, which is a lot easier to work with. That takes care of the first part of uh, the VRC setup. We'll continue in the second part. Thank you.